Counterpicking to FD is bad. At Smash Summit 12, IBDW beat Zayn for the first time in his career while employing an unusual counterpicking strategy for the Fox vs. Marth matchup. He allowed a strike to Frozen Pokemon Stadium for Game 1, generally considered Marth's best of the starting stages, and lost. Then, he counterpicked Zayn to Final Destination, the stage that is universally regarded as by far Marth's best stage in the matchup. He won that game, and went on to win the set 3-2. Was this a good strategy? IBDW thinks so, and he explained his reasoning in a recent stream. So basically, what the thought process is, there's a universe where I lose on my counterpick, and then I have to win two games on the only stage that I lose on, right? If I go to FD and I get this stage out of the way, where does he take me? Mathematically, there's no difference winning three games in a row on these stages as opposed to winning one, two here and in a row and then one somewhere else, right? There's no, mathematically no difference. And so if you go here first, you are now the only possible scenario that's different is if you have to win two games on FD. This argument is centered around the idea that Fox does not have a clear counterpick against Marth, with Dreamland, Yoshi's Story, Battlefield, and Fountain of Dreams all giving Fox close to 50-50 winning odds. Additionally, Dave's stupid rule, or DSR, enforces that no player may counterpick to a stage they've already won on. By striking to Pokemon Stadium and counterpicking to Final Destination in the case of a Game 1 loss, in the worst case scenario Fox's only two difficult stages are out of the way for the rest of the set due to DSR. Now Marth has no counterpick left and Fox only needs to win three games on the four stages that are decent to good for him, depending on who you ask. This also avoids the difficult scenario that sometimes comes up in standard counterpicking, where being down 2-0 means Fox needs to win on Final Destination twice to win the set. So, does this logic hold up to mathematical analysis? Let's find out. So, a few preliminaries. We're going to assume that there is some quote-unquote true stage matchup spread for Fox vs. Marth, and that both players are aware of what it is. For a first pass at this, we'll use IBDW's own estimation of the matchup spread, pictured here from Fox's perspective. Second, we're going to differentiate IBDW's counterpicking strategy from what we'll call the standard counterpicking strategy. The standard strategy is very intuitive. You simply pick the best remaining stage for yourself that is allowed by DSR. For stage striking, the standard strategy is to strike the worst two starting stages for yourself. We'll assume that the Marth is employing the standard strategy in both striking and counterpicking. IBDW's counterpicking strategy is exactly the same as standard, except that if you are down 0-1, you counterpick to your worst stage instead of your best. In the stage striking, you do not strike your second worst stage. We're also assuming a frozen Pokemon Stadium rule set, where Pokemon Stadium is a starter stage and FD is the counterpick stage. We're going to represent the best of five counterpick game using the game tree found here. A given best of five set traverses this tree from the root node that is zero to zero to one of the shaded leaf nodes where a winner is determined. If we know the probabilities of reaching each of these leaf nodes, we can add them up to get the probabilities of each player winning the set. How we traverse this tree is determined by each player's counterpicking strategy and the win probabilities on those counterpicks. For example, if the first game is played on Pokemon Stadium, there is a 45% chance IBDW wins and we'd move down the red edge to the 1-0 node. Because Zane is using standard counterpicking, he picks FD and there is a 65% chance the set goes down the blue edge to the 1-1 node below it. Thus, the likeliness that that particular 1-1 node is reached is the product of the 65% win chance for Zane on FD and the 45% win chance for IBDW on Stadium, resulting in a combined 29.25% probability of happening. In the same matter for any node, the probability of reaching it is the product of all of the probabilities along the path to it from the root node. The most polarizing aspect of IBDW's strategy is the counterpick to FD, so let's analyze that choice on its own by first assuming that Game 1 is played on Pokemon Stadium and Marth wins. Keep in mind that for the stage matchup spread numbers we're using, Battlefield, FOD, Dreamland, and Yoshi's Story are all completely interchangeable DSR notwithstanding. 
This figure shows the game tree starting from the 0-1 node and playing out the standard counterpick strategies for both players. The edges have corresponding probabilities for the winner according to the stage matchup spread we're using, and the stage played on is shown next to each node. Leaf nodes have their corresponding probabilities being reached shown underneath them, bolded and underlined to distinguish them from edge probabilities. By adding up all the leaf node probabilities, we get that Fox has approximately a 27.47 chance of winning from down 0-1 under this strategy. This figure shows the corresponding tree for IBDW's strategy. I've also added an arrow showing the leaf node that the Summit 12 set ended up at. Once again, we can add up all the leaf node probabilities to see that Fox has approximately a 26.36% chance of winning from down 0-1 with this strategy. So what we found is that given Fox has already lost Game 1 on Pokemon Stadium, IBDW's strategy of counterpicking to FD is very slightly inferior to the conventional counterpicking strategy. Where did his logic go wrong, and why, if you're like me, is IBDW's strategy better here than you might expect? Well, the IBDW strategy is in fact much better if you get down 0-2 as Fox. Under the standard strategy, you'd have only a 6.7% chance of the reverse 3-0 with those back-to-back -back games on FD, but with the IBDW strategy, you have a 16.6% .6 chance in large part thanks to not having to play on FD at all from that point. However, the reason this strategy ultimately falls short is that this increased chance of a reverse 3-0 does not make up for the fact that you are more likely to go down 0-2 in the first place. Under both strategies, Fox has about a 44% chance of winning the set if he evens it up at 1-1, and under our matchup spread, he has a 20% higher chance of doing that with conventional counterpicking. So we looked at the FD pick in isolation, but another part of the strategy is striking to Pokemon Stadium instead of Battlefield, Yoshi's, etc. When factoring in conventional stage striking and the outcome of the first game, the gap actually widens in favor of the standard strategy. Using the same process as shown in the earlier figures, we can find that the standard strategy gives Fox approximately a 46.97% chance of winning the set, while the IBDW strategy is only 43.54%. The logic for this is basically the same as for the FD pick. Given that you lose the first game, you'd rather lose on Pokemon Stadium, but going to PS increases your chances of losing by 10%. Because being up 1-0 is so valuable, it's better to maximize your chances of it happening by striking to a better stage. Up until now, we've been treating that matchup spread IBDW threw together on stream as gospel. However, to be fair, he specifically mentioned that many of these spreads are still up in the air and have room for error. So, we allowed for each stage spread to have an error of plus or minus 5% in increments of 1%, then generated a million new matchup spreads where each stage's spread is perturbed by up to 5%. This figure shows a histogram of the win probability gap in favor of the standard strategy for each of the generated spreads, where theoretically a negative advantage would indicate that IBDW's strategy is better. A histogram divides data into discrete bins and counts up the number of data in each bin. In this figure, there are 100 bins between the minimum and maximum win probability advantage. We can see that the standard strategy is at minimum about 0.5% better than IBDW's strategy and up to a maximum of 9% better. Let's visualize some of these extreme spreads. This figure shows the three spreads out of the million generated with the smallest advantage for the standard strategy. We can see the key feature is that Pokemon Stadium is no worse than the other non-FD stages for Fox. This makes the decision to strike to Pokemon Stadium equivalent to the standard strategy. It also seems that an FD spread that is better for Fox makes the IBDW strategy slightly better. This figure shows the three spreads out of the million with the largest advantage for the standard strategy. They all share the trait that Pokemon has the worst perturbed spread of 40% for Fox, making striking there the most costly in the IBDW strat. Also, three of the four Fox favored stages are perturbed to the maximum of 60% Fox favored in all three examples. This makes counterpicking FD instead of one of those stages even worse. FD seems to be in the sweet spot right around 35%, and I'm not exactly sure the reason for this. It's surprising to me that in both the minimum and maximum case, the win probability of FD varies the most, whereas the other stages are very locked into the extremes. This indicates to me that FD's exact win probability is the least important factor in differentiating the two strategies. We found that IBDW's counterpick strategy ranges from marginally worse to significantly worse than standard counterpicking depending on the exact stage matchup spread for Fox vs. Mark. While IBDW's strategy gives Fox a higher chance of making a reverse 3-0 comeback when down 0-2, this does not make up for the fact that it also makes it more likely that Fox will go down 0-2 in the first place. 
The reason that IBDW strategy might feel better despite being statistically worse could be overrating the probability of a reverse 3-0 on Fox's good stages, underrating the value of going up 1-0 or evening a set to 1-1, one and, one, and overrating the probability of going down 0-2 under standard counterpicking. But hey, now IBDW can say he beat Zayn for the first time while handicapping himself with a statistically bad counterpick strategy. Thanks for watching. So this hit me what happened. Why? Why did he yeah, upset it? I'm, I'm very confused too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Even just based on her pattern recognition, it's just been so many years oh, that oh. I've seen this as the Marth counterpick. Right. Okay. Yep. You gotta close the stock out. Though. You gotta close the last stock out. Though. I don't even think Zane. Like, if Zane loses this, I think she's pulling Oh, that's it. Back. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That double shot was fire. You yeah. want the double shine in the Where did that come from? from? <laughs> that is my BS. Oh, Wave yep. that up smash. And Cody, I be the top. This moves on to buy the game. Finals with the fight set. Hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Huge shoutouts to Slypig for giving me permission to adapt his write up on the stats behind the FD counterpick into this video that you just witnessed. If you thought that was cool, give him a follow on Twitter at JD underscore Slypig, and maybe we'll do some more of these in the future. Thank you to my patrons for helping make videos like these possible, especially Avishua Stein, Dorian, and Storm. And as always, thanks to you for watching, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.